Weapons of War will take you on a tour through the high-tech world of modern warfare. Along the Earth's surface, under its seas, into the skies, and even into space itself. Video footage for many of the latest weapon systems was unavailable, considered too sensitive by the Pentagon and by the contractors themselves. For this reason, Weapons of War can be little more than a brief overview, an introduction to the vast world of high-tech weaponry. The powers of these weapons have, with time and untold human effort, increased at an exponential rate. The results of these efforts are incredible and even a little frightening. Let's take a look into the world of advanced military technology. The newest submarines are basically mobile and therefore survivable strategic weapons launching sites. These modern submarines are designed to evade the latest in anti-submarine warfare. They are quieter, deeper diving machines. They need to be to survive because the enemy is looking for them. Beneath 133 million square miles of ocean lies a world of the hunted. Above, a small part of this vastness circles a hunter. Mission, support a NATO convoy exercise. Challenge, locate, identify, track, and neutralize a threat. One submarine of an active Soviet fleet of more than 350. Thirty minutes left on station. Tonight's search pattern spans 15,000 square miles and hundreds of signals. The ASW operator carefully analyzes the origin of each trace as the subhunter advances the course of the convoy. His analysis is critical, for he must advise hostile sub. or not. Technology hasn't completely taken the guesswork out of locating and classifying submarines or reduced the burden of uncertainty. In the last decade, Soviet submarine design and engineering have improved. Advances gained primarily through espionage and the illegal transfer of technology the Soviets now have deeper diving and quieter submarines. Sonovoys are expendable devices dropped into the ocean from Navy aircraft. Once deployed, they detect underwater sounds and transmit them by radio to an aircraft. The signals are processed to yield the location and identification of submarines. Unlike passive sonobuoys, which continually transmit information on submarine location only in real time, TSS decides what information is important, selectively records it, and plays it back later. To make this decision, TSS has a trigger that discriminates between sounds of interest. When TSS gets a target, the system activates. It records the threat information, then conserves its memory until it gets another target. Since this data is stored in memory, the ASW aircraft can interrogate the field of TSS buoys sometime later. As the aircraft flies over, only SANA buoys with potential targets respond. Their messages are electronically composed for operator interpolation. As smart sauna boys gather greater quantities of data, the operator needs a smart signal processor to help manage this data effectively. 
Update 4 uses the latest in 32-bit data processing technology to help him. Update 4 features color displays to present information more clearly, enhanced sound systems to help him hear contacts better, and decision aids to more efficiently manage the information and increase the probability of identifying an enemy sub. Universal displays throughout the aircraft allow crew stations to exchange information. Update 4 is the critical link between the data gathering sauna boys and the operator on station. Update 4 organizes and prioritizes the incoming information. It takes the guesswork out of signal processing. the seas, the mission of the U.S. Navy. Our security in times of peace depends on it. Our victory in times of global conflict demands it. The threat to this mission is pervasive. Soviet ships outnumber ours, and Soviet submarines grow more sophisticated. To counter this threat, the U.S. Navy created Lamps Mark I, the light airborne multi-purpose system, submarine hunting ships and helicopters working in tandem have met this threat effectively, thanks in large part to a seafaring workhorse that has chalked up an enviable record. Today, new generations of Soviet submarines, more silent and more deadly, continue to arrive on station. The threat grows increasingly serious. And because of the LAMP's Mark I operational requirement, so has our response. Introducing the SH-2G Super Sea Sprite. Featuring the latest in available avionics. Multi-mission modular capability built around a 1553B data bus an acoustic Sonobuoy processor, and a 99-channel Sonobuoy receiver. A multifunction display that digitally depicts all information, acoustics, radar, or MAD data, and has the capability to display it, either singly or in combination, on one easy-to-read screen that can also display the tactical situation. This onboard processing ability, together with improved ESM, MAD, and Navstar GPS capability, results in superior targeting and attack solutions. The offensive power of the SH-2G is greatly enhanced by highly sophisticated Mark 50 torpedoes and an onboard presetter. While dual chaff and flare dispensers provide the helicopter with new defensive capability, with dipping sonar, the SH-2G can further expand its active anti-submarine warfare role. New low-frequency dipping sonar capability multiplies our chances to acquire a target quicker in high noise and shallow water environments, as well as close-in convoy screening. Here, data from the dipping sonar is processed aboard the aircraft and acted upon immediately, or transmitted back to the ship. Add FLIR, and the HELO's anti-surface capability grows dramatically, providing standoff identification as well as an improved ability to fly and fight in night and foul weather operations. In anti-surface warfare, the SH-2G can cover a 40% larger search area. And when equipped with the advanced AN-ALR-66V3, the aircraft will have superior ESM. Providing complete emitter coverage that not only reduces bearing error, extends range detection, and provides covert third-party targeting, but also greatly improves both helicopter and surface combatant survivability. 
side suppression armament, forward-looking infrared, and IR jamming. In addition, this weapons platform has already proven its air-to-air -air missile capability. The SH-2G Super Sea Sprite is ready now. Following World War II, the United States commanded the most powerful navy in the world. Despite a massive buildup by the Soviet Union, the U.S. and its allies still rule the seas. The F-14 Tomcat is the ultimate air combat weapons system. Designed by the Grumman Corporation to give the U.S. Navy the most advanced fighter in the world, the twin-engine Tomcat combines the speed and maneuverability of a dogfighter with the detection and tracking capability of the AWG-9 weapons control system. The AWG-9 track while scan radar, built by Hughes Aircraft, gives the two-man crew the ability to track 24 enemy targets and simultaneously attack six different threats at varied altitudes and distances. The Tomcat can be equipped with any combination of air-to-air -air missiles, including the Phoenix, Sparrow, or the heat-seeking Sidewinder. Guided by the AWG-9, Phoenix missiles have intercepted targets at distances of over 100 miles and at altitudes ranging from 50 to over 80,000 feet. 17 April 1980, the Pacific Missile Test Center, Point Magoo, California. An F-14 Tomcat takes off for a historic test. It's armed with a new version of the most advanced air-to-air -air weapon now in operation, the U.S. Navy's Phoenix missile, designed and built by Hughes Aircraft Company. unaugmented F-4 Phantom drone flying at high altitude and at greater range for this type of target than any previous successful attack. In its first guided launch, the new AIM-54C improved Phoenix without a warhead, passed well within lethal distance and would have destroyed the target. The current version of the Phoenix missile, AIM-54A, is tactically deployed around the world on the Navy's F-14 Tomcat. Phoenix is the Navy's primary long-range air defense weapon and one of the world's most technologically advanced tactical missiles. It provides air-to-air -air attack capability well beyond that provided by any other air-launched missile in existence. Its unique performance features have been clearly demonstrated in over 150 flight tests and Navy operational launches. As flight tests of the improved Phoenix continue, there is every assurance, based on successful launches to date, that the reborn Phoenix missile, the AIM-54C, will be ready to meet the higher intensity aerial threats through the next two decades.
running interference for the Tomcats is the EA-6B Prowler. A crew of four operates its arsenal of electronic surveillance computers and high-power jamming transmitters. Its major function is to suppress enemy radar and communication signals so that attack aircraft can put their weapons on target. The jamming transmitters are contained in pods mounted externally on the wings of the aircraft. The Prowler's jamming abilities can be varied through the frequency spectrum by changing the combination of transmitters it carries, making it effective against a wide range of enemy radar. Another carrier-based weapon is the A6E Intruder. The Intruder is an all-weather, day or night attack aircraft. This precision bomber can detect track and destroy targets in all conditions. Capable of carrying 18,000 pounds of bombs and fuel, the A6E is a formidable weapon. With its forward-looking infrared system, the intruder can attack enemy installations at night. The infrared camera mounted under the nose provides the crew with a television picture of the enemy target. Ground weapons have also seen massive technological advancements. Since the invention of the cannon hundreds of years ago, artillery has played a significant role in modern warfare. Today's modern battlefield can bring into play a vast array of exotic weapon systems and countermeasures. Events around the world have once again proved that artillery and mortars remain the most used battlefield weapons and the most feared. Operating at standoff ranges and from concealed positions, such weapons are difficult to locate. Usually by the time counterfire can be initiated, it is too late. But today, enemy weapons must contend with firefinders. The long-range ANTPQ-37 weapon-locating radar developed for the U.S. Army by the Hughes Aircraft Company. With the ANTPQ-37, as the enemy's first round breaks over the horizon, it is instantly detected. Within seconds, the system automatically tracks the projectile and computes the weapon's location. The location is relayed to friendly counterfire batteries, allowing them to return accurate fire on the weapon, often before the enemy can adjust a second volley. Knowing they can be destroyed within minutes after they fire can obviously have a deterrent effect on enemy weapon crews. How does the ANTPQ-37 perform this previously almost impossible mission? Deployed well back from the forward edge of the battle area, the ANTPQ-37 long-range, range-gated pulse Doppler radar system employs a phased array antenna to automatically scan the horizon many times a second, forming a 90-degree wide electronic blanket over the battlefield. Any projectile passing through this electronic blanket is automatically detected and tracked while the search beams simultaneously continue to search the selected 90-degree sector for other projectiles. Inside a control shelter, a digital computer plots the trajectory, automatically rejecting clutter and false alarms due to weather, birds, insect swarms, or distant aircraft computes the enemy's firing point, 
and displays this location as a spot of light on a battlefield map of the area. Digital readouts also display the location corrected to the height of the hostile weapon. A printer automatically provides a hard copy record of the data. The location coordinates and altitude are relayed to the fire direction center, which can rapidly initiate counterfire. Accuracy is within counterfire capabilities, thus allowing immediate fire for effect. When there are multiple enemy firings, sometimes from widely separated locations, the system simultaneously tracks each projectile and determines the separate weapon positions. In the event of very high projectile density, the ANTP Q37 automatically adjusts its search and track rates to accommodate the increase in targets. A large number of targets can be processed and stored in the order of their detection, awaiting operator action. For reporting purposes, the operator can request a display of the various weapon locations. The system can also predict the impact point of rounds from each enemy weapon. This assists the battlefield commander in giving target priorities to his return fire. Features that make the ANTP Q37 unique are its survivability and its resistance to ECM. These are due, for example, to the system's waveform diversity and high gain pencil beam, its ability to turn off and on rapidly, and its low power output and low side lobes. These qualities, as well as the system's defilated location, make it a difficult radar to detect and neutralize, even by jamming or by radar homing missiles. Thus, while the enemy is constantly increasing the number and lethality of its indirect fire weapons, the ANTP Q-37 Firefinder gives today's field commander a means of countering enemy firepower that is immediate and extremely effective. Chaparral is the Army's short-range surface-to-air missile system. The Chaparral missile is a heat seeker. Once launched, it will chase down the hot tailpipe of planes, choppers, or other missiles and deliver its warhead with devastating accuracy. Equipped with FLIR technology, the Chaparral is capable of fighting day or night and in fog or smoke. Effective against all types of aircraft at low altitudes, the Chaparral is mounted on a track vehicle or can be towed by a truck or jeep. Rockwell International's Hellfire is the United States Army's newest and most effective operational anti-armor weapon system. Hellfire is laser guided. There are no wires controlling the missile. This allows the helicopter to launch the missile and leave immediately to avoid enemy fire. A ground laser designator team in a hidden location places a laser spot on the target's most vulnerable area. The spot is invisible, but this special camera allows it to be seen for this demonstration. The Hellfire missile locks onto the laser spot and follows it to impact. The laser spot can come from the launch helicopter, another helicopter, or from another aircraft. Since the helicopter is not tied to the missile by wire and the missile flies at supersonic speed, 
exposure time is greatly reduced, which means greater safety for the helicopter and crew. Hellfire can also be launched at night and in adverse weather for better concealment from the enemy. Hellfire can be operated in the direct fire mode where there is line of sight to the target and the missile is locked onto the target before launch. Or the helicopter can take advantage of concealment and launch in the indirect fire mode. The missile acquires the laser spot after launch and locks onto it while in flight. With Hellfire's accuracy and shape charge anti-armor warhead, Hellfire defeats all known armor. Sequential or salvo type launches are possible with Hellfire in combination with one or more designators. These engagement modes are extremely effective for target-rich environments. Hellfire has been launched from the ground. Being able to fire the missile in the indirect mode allows the launch crew to take advantage of natural terrain masking for protection. A new generation of combat support vehicles can use Hellfire to great advantage. The ability to launch Hellfire from a wide variety of platforms, helicopter, fixed wing, or ground vehicle, long range launch, operation from cover, the capability of multiple launch, accuracy and lethality. These are the advantages that Rockwell's Hellfire brings to the field commander. To meet the threat posed by Soviet numeric advantages in personnel and weapons, U.S. and Allied military doctrine increasingly rely on our superior technology. The mainstay of this doctrine is the maneuver arms, with firepower providing the destructive force essential in defeating the enemy's ability and will to fight. To exploit this relationship, the Army must exercise greater and more effective command and control. The field artillery's response to this challenge is a new and totally integrated approach to support the air-land battle, both now and in the future. AFATIDS is more than an improved fire support system. It's the cornerstone of the Army's tactical command and control architecture. A FATIDS is designed to interoperate with the emerging systems of maneuver, air defense, combat service support, intelligence and electronic warfare, and fire support. A FATIDS allows the field artillery not only to process calls for fire, but actually manage the fire support battle ensuring the right weapon system is employed on the right target at the right time, wresting the initiative from the enemy, dictating the tempo of the battle. A FATIDS integrates the full range of fire support assets. Coordinated firepower is used in the most effective manner possible to support the commander's scheme of maneuver. Here's how A FATIDS supports the decision-making process. The brigade commander briefly reviews the enemy in friendly situations. He explains the brigade's mission and issues his initial planning guidance. To his fire support officer, he points out critical areas which need priority consideration. The brigade FSO must determine how his fire support assets will be used, 
what types of targets offer the greatest payoff, and when they should be engaged. The Brigade FSO uses a FATIDS to quickly review the status of his assets and their ability to support the maneuver mission. The FSO war games each course of action to maximize the distribution of fires. Other members of the fire support cell, or FSC, analyze requirements to ensure that all high-value targets can be acquired. Once the commander selects a scheme of maneuver, the FSC builds the fire support plan. The approved plan is then disseminated to other fire support agencies. At the artillery battalion talk, the S3 uses a FATIDS to develop movement plans and issue orders to his firing units. A FATIDS puts the fire plan into action, ensuring the right munition is delivered on the highest payoff target at the most opportune moment. But it also supports the attack of targets of opportunity. A target is acquired and a fire request is received at the battalion fire support cell. Processing of the fire request is normally automatic, with the FSO intervening only if the request violates the commander's guidance. The request is checked against other target nominations for any duplication. It's then prioritized according to its value to the mission and placed on a target list. Each available fire support resource is analyzed for its effect on the target. For this mission, field artillery is chosen as the most efficient means of attack. Throughout the process, a FATIDS is actively managing the battle, ensuring that responsive, effective fires are delivered where needed, when needed. The Grumman X-29 looks unusual. On closer examination, you notice that the wings are swept forward rather than backward. Compared to conventional rear-swept wings, forward-swept wings offer higher maneuverability and improved slow-speed handling. The X-29 has already hit Mach 1 and is expected to fly faster in the future. This aircraft has the advantage of lower drag across its entire operational envelope, permitting the use of a smaller engine. The forward swept wing design holds promise for a new generation of tactical aircraft that will be more efficient and less expensive than present day fighters. The F-15 is capable of speeds two and a half times the speed of sound with the ability to climb at 50,000 feet per minute. It's the Air Force's air superiority fighter, but can also be fitted as a long-range bomber and surface-to-air launching platform when fitted with the Hughes Aircraft APG-70 radar and other targeting systems. The APG-70 can provide an image of the terrain 170 miles ahead of the aircraft, greatly enhancing the plane's ability to destroy ground targets. This system provides the F-15 with total air superiority under all weather conditions, in air-to-air -air combat, and when delivering air-to-ground weapons. The APG-70 allows the pilot to search for targets well beyond the visual range and to sort targets that are moving in close formation. Other sensory systems for the aircraft include FLIR technology, which gives the pilot and crew real-time TV-like images for locating, identifying, and tracking targets at night and in bad weather. FLIR systems housed in aerodynamic bodies attached under the aircraft can also aid in navigation and landing the craft in poor weather. By changing the targeting and radar systems and the types of weapons the planes carry, every plane in the modern arsenal can perform a variety of functions. They can fight air-to-air, air-to-ground, fly reconnaissance, or fly bombing missions. Whatever the situation calls for, modern planes can be equipped to do the job. The 
AIM-9L missile brought a reliable all-aspect attack capability to the combat-proven Sidewinder family. Under the U.S. Security Assistance Development and Production Program, Ford Aerospace developed and produced over 8,000 AIM-9P Sidewinder missiles for the U.S. Air Force and 16 allies. The improved AIM-9P has recently completed an extensive series of Air Force tests, establishing the levels of performance and reliability improvements to this Sidewinder air-to-air -air infrared missile system. Ford Aerospace has complete missile production experience, including assembly, integration, and test of more than 87,000 all-up round tactical missiles. The GBU-15 system, developed by Rockwell International, gives the United States Air Force a standoff strike capability against a variety of defended targets. GBU-15 increases the aircraft's chances of survival by allowing it to operate outside enemy defenses that protect high-value targets. The weapon is launched from standoff range, and the aircraft can immediately leave the launch area. The weapon has a television seeker in the nose. The picture from the seeker is transmitted by RF data link to the cockpit of the launch aircraft. The weapon system operator uses the television picture to locate the target area. When the operator identifies the target, he can lock on the weapon's automatic tracker. As the weapon reaches the top of its climb and begins a descent to the target area, the operator can improve the aim point if he desires and continue on automatic track. He also has the option to manually guide the weapon to impact. The GBU-15 was designed to be effective against such targets as bridges, airfields, industrial sites, caves or aircraft shelters, air defense sites, and ships. GBU-15 is modular in design for low-cost operation. A Mark 84 2,000-pound bomb from Air Force inventory is used for the base. The seeker, warhead adapter, and control module are fitted to the bomb. Wings are added to complete the weapon. With GBU-15, several delivery tactics can be used. Low altitude launch is the most common. The weapon system can also be launched from high altitude at even greater standoff ranges. The GBU-15 has proven to be a reliable and cost-effective weapon system that provides pinpoint accuracy against a variety of targets at standoff ranges to greatly enhance aircraft survivability. The EF-111A is an advanced electronic warfare aircraft. Three tons of sophisticated electronics, including transmitters, receivers, antennas, computers, and display equipment, have been loaded into the airframe of the F-111 fighter bomber. The F-111 is capable of Mach 2, and with 32,000 pounds of fuel can stay aloft for over four hours. This combination of speed and range allows the EF-111A to fly escort to fighter-bomber missions while providing blanket radar jamming coverage. It can also function as a standoff jammer, loitering miles from enemy territory, using its endurance to provide electronic cover from a distance. 
Hiding attack aircraft from the hostile radar of the enemy is the primary function of the EF-111 and its Navy counterpart, the EA-6B Prowler. The threat is real. Our tactical air crews are threatened by an integrated network of radar-directed surface-to-air missiles and gunfire. These systems are increasingly mobile, with overlapping coverage of the entire battle area. In order for our air crews to survive and accomplish their missions, this dense, increasingly sophisticated growing threat must be suppressed. And it is, with harm, the high-speed anti-radar missile. Developed by the Naval Weapons Center, Naval Air Systems Command, and Texas Instruments Incorporated, HARM's broadband guidance section, adaptive retargeting, digital autopilot, and high-speed maneuverable airframe yield the most formidable defense suppression weapon system in production today. Launched from over the horizon or in quick reaction, HARM is a unique weapon system, proven through years of testing and evaluation. HARM is currently integrated on the Navy's A-7E and F-A-18 attack aircraft and is soon to be integrated on the EA-6B and A-6E. On the F-4G Wild Weasel aircraft, HARM is programmed to attack specific targets identified by the APR-38 radar location and attack system. Future aircraft integration using launcher-mounted avionics make HARM a possible candidate weapon for many other aircraft such as the F-4E, F-15E, F-16, and the tri-national European-built multi-role combat aircraft known as the Tornado. The guidance section contains a broadband radar frequency receiver, which features high sensitivity and the ability to discriminate between the signals in a modern radar threat environment. Guidance operation is controlled by a digital central processor unit which executes target identification, tracking, ELENT, and autopilot functions. The control section features a strapped-down inertial navigation system providing onboard position data to the CPU for computation of optimum missile flight trajectory. The propulsion section is a low-smoke solid propellant rocket motor with a boost and sustain phase to achieve high speed and long range. A blast fragmentation warhead detonated by a proximity fuse optimizes the damage to the radar and prevents deadly radar-directed missiles or gunfire from being directed toward our tactical aircraft. HARM has several operational modes. Direct attack options include a semi-automatic quick reaction mode to suppress radars threatening the aircraft, a crew-selectable target of opportunity offensive mode to attack unsuspecting radars, and a long-range standoff mode allowing attack of known radar sites from a safe distance. Regardless of the operational mode used, HARM has the ability to adaptively retarget in flight should the operational situation change after the missile has been fired. This capability, called Flex Logic, is unique to HARM and allows the missile to complete its suppression mission in a battle situation. Allied troops must be able to operate in an electronic warfare environment. Clear radio transmissions are essential to Allied success. Superior speed, range, weaponry, and operational flexibility give American pilots a competitive edge. 401 10 8 Barry's 35 5 2 minutes FLIP. Roger, target tank, November 2 Say again, you were jabbed. Roger, target tank. So long as they can communicate. To apply combat punch where it's needed, when it's needed, the pilot must have mission critical information. Positive command and control depends on rapid, accurate, secure, and reliable communication, especially in electronic warfare environments. In effect, jamming comes down to this. A no copy, you're being jabbed, say again. When you can't talk, you can't fight. This new Have Quick system provides effective, jam-resistant, tactical, voice communications for missions in electronic warfare environments. 
In short, Have Quick became a lifeline. Although the B-52 Stratofortress is in its third decade of operational service, it continues to be of value in a strategic deterrent role. With the addition of the air-launched cruise missile to the B-52 weapon system, the aircraft will continue to play a part in the nation's defense strategy. The standoff capability provided by cruise missiles, which can be fitted with nuclear warheads, allows the Stratofortress to strike enemy targets without exposing itself to flights over hostile enemy territory. But there is an aircraft ready to fly into enemy territory and come out alive. The most advanced, most capable bomber in the world, the B-1. B-1B bombers are moving out of the factory onto the airfields, bringing new strength to America's defense. The B-1B has tremendous acceleration. It has great maneuverability and unusually quick control response. It is truly a pilot's airplane. Flying the airplane, the B-1, like that, down low at those speeds, it makes the B-1 impossible to shoot down. Virtually impossible, just from brute force pure speed and low altitude. I know of no aircraft or missile in the air that could defeat that, and I know of no uh, ground threat that could defeat that. It would be pure luck. Widely regarded as the most sophisticated airborne electronic countermeasure system ever developed, the ALQ-161 detects, classifies, identifies, and prioritizes multiple threats and selects appropriate jamming measures to simultaneously defeat them. The ALQ-161, giving the United States Air Force B-1B the electronic eyes, ears, and punch to penetrate hostile air defenses anywhere in the world. Mission objective, protect our country's strategic and tactical aircraft against hostile ground and airborne threats. Mission solution, electronic countermeasure systems from ITT Avionics for the B-52 bomber, for Army helicopters, and for Navy and Air Force frontline tactical aircraft. ITT Avionics designs and builds the electronic countermeasure systems our airmen need to protect against enemy threats, to penetrate hostile airspace, and to accomplish their mission. From design to deployment, success and survival is a mission ITT Avionics dedicates itself to every day. The dynamic nature of electronic warfare demands system flexibility. Our computerized data bank makes new threat information instantly available to designers. Mission success depends on the performance of our systems in extremely hostile environmental conditions. Environmental stress screening at ITT weeds out weak components before they enter our systems. Logistic support can also make the difference between performance and failure. ITT's computer-aided logistic support systems ensure a smooth-flowing pipeline from Spears facilities to the field. ITT's success is measured by the performance of our ECM systems. The AN-ALQ-172 ECM system, developed in coordination with the Air Force, provides protection against enemy ground and airborne threats to the B-52G and H. This versatile system is flight line reprogrammable to counter evolving enemy threats. The Army's attack helicopters fly the smallest, lightest ECM system in the U.S. inventory, ITT's AN-ALQ-136. Fully automatic and software reprogrammable, the 136 provides protection against multiple threats from ground-based anti-aircraft batteries, surface-to-air missiles, and enemy aircraft. 
the ANALQ-165 ASPJ, designed by ITT and Westinghouse, is the most advanced internal ECM system for frontline Navy and Air Force fighter aircraft. ASPJ, now in production, provides tactical aircraft with the latest in airborne self-protection, countering the most modern weapons known to us. ASPJ will effectively counter threats to tactical aircraft well into the 21st century. On every mission, our systems help ensure survival. And survival is what mission success demands. Rocket technology has taken us into space. In 1969, we put a man on the moon. That event, along with our increasing knowledge, has made space a very possible battleground in the coming decades. The news has been filled with stories and controversy over SDI, Strategic Defense Initiative. The Soviet Union is believed to have a ground-based laser already capable of destroying satellites in space and, like the United States, has for many years had the ability to take out satellites with missile technology. It seems our abilities are bounded only by the limits of our imaginations. If the need is strong enough, we will always find a way to meet the challenge. <laughs> 